You're not going to believe me when I say this, but Oklahoma is home to one of the most outrageous Christian nationalist pieces of legislation I have ever seen. Okay, you totally believe me, but whatever. I'm going to try to explain myself anyway. A proposed bill would allow fundamentalist Christian preachers into public schools to teach students the King James Version of the Bible. That version specifically. It's like a brand new, very targeted form of indoctrination. I'm not exaggerating here either. This is the focus of Senate Bill 1161, which was recently filed by State Senator George Burns. But to really understand what he just did, it helps to know what public schools in Oklahoma already do. In 2010, the state passed a law that allows public school districts to offer high schoolers an elective course, meaning they don't have to take it, but they can choose to, all about the impact of the Old Testament, the New Testament, or both. The law said any class like this would abide by religious neutrality laws and shall not endorse, favor, or promote, or disfavor, or show hostility toward any particular religion or non-religious faith or religious perspective. In English, that means this was explicitly different from church. Teachers of these classes could not say that the Bible is true, only that the Bible says this, or influenced that, or inspired something else. The focus of these classes was ostensibly on the Bible's content and impact on culture, which, I would argue, is worth knowing. If for no other reason, then it really is the basis for understanding a lot of cultural references and literary allusions and modern political strategies. There is room for that kind of education, even in public schools, but only if it's done right. That caveat in the law about how these classes would be objective was necessary, but it also made it harder to go after in court. Several states have similar statutes on the books. That law also said that such a class, if offered, would have to be taught by someone certified to teach social studies or literature. In other words, someone with teaching qualifications. Which is kind of the bare minimum you could ask for, since this was a class for credit and it was promoted as a cultural or literature-based class. You want someone who has teaching credentials in those areas. The same law also made clear that students may not be required to use a specific translation as the sole text. Any Bible would do, which also made sense if you're trying to teach kids the story of Adam and Eve and how and why they were featured in famous works of art, for example. It doesn't matter which version of the Bible you use because the general story is the same in all of them. The specific word choices don't matter. This is not church. This is not about which interpretation is correct, remember? So, even though this kind of class is clearly part of a larger Christian nationalist agenda trying to inject the Bible into schools using any available method, it seemed that its supporters had their legal bases covered. Except you know it wasn't really going to be objective. Just to give you one clear example of neutrality not working in practice, in 2014, one Oklahoma school district adopted a specific Bible class curriculum developed by, wait for it, the president of Hobby Lobby, Steve Green. Hobby Lobby, as I'm sure you all know, loves Jesus. And also illegally smuggling artifacts for their Bible museum in Washington, D.C. Anyway, when the Freedom From Religion Foundation got a copy of the proposed textbook for the course, they alerted the district that the content showed a clear Christian bias, treated the Bible as historically accurate and true in all respects, and made theological claims. Basically, there was nothing objective about this particular curriculum, even though the law required the class to remain objective. 
facing a very clear lawsuit threat, the district later dropped the course. They would not offer it to students. And one reason they gave for that decision was that the Hobby Lobby people would not agree to provide legal coverage to the school district in case they were sued. <laughs> the district knew this could end badly, and they wanted insurance, and Hobby Lobby refused to defend their own clearly pro-Christian blueprint. My point is, the 2010 law, despite its clear language against religious indoctrination, wasn't going to stop Christians from trying to promote their religion in school anyway. I should mention, there was also another proposed piece of legislation in 2015 in response to that Hobby Lobby controversy that would have shielded all school districts from lawsuits regarding the Bible class, basically opening the door to proselytizing in the classroom with no way for anyone to fight back. That bill, thankfully, did not go anywhere. Even in Oklahoma, that was a bridge too far. Okay, so let's talk about this new proposed law. The current bill would modify the existing 2010 law in ways that just raise all kinds of red flags. And there are three big changes George Burns wants to make. Number one, the bill would require the King James Version of the Bible to become the official text for the course, basically pushing one particular version of the Bible on all students, even though plenty of Christian denominations, including just about all Catholics, don't use that version. The bill says other texts would be acceptable for use in class, but not as a replacement for the KJV. You know who loves the KJV, by the way? Fundamentalist Baptist churches. More on that in a bit. Number two the bill would change the teacher requirement to allow ordained preachers with no educational training to teach the course as volunteers, as if not paying them with taxpayer dollars makes it all okay. That move offers literally zero educational benefit to students, but it does create a way for church leaders to get inside the classroom. So even though the law would still say they must teach the class objectively, this bill would invite people into classrooms whose entire careers are built on teaching the Bible very, very subjectively. Number three, the bill would force any school district that offers the Bible elective class to carry the KJV Bible in their libraries. I'll be honest, I don't particularly care about this change one way or the other. You can have books in the library. I mean, it doesn't mean kids have to read them. But for a Republican lawmaker whose party is all about keeping big government out of your life, this clause would effectively micromanage the job of school librarians who already have systems in place to decide which books they need. It's not like there's a legal requirement to have copies of the Quran or certain atheist books. But some of these schools would have to have a KJV Bible on hand if this bill became a law. Again, there's just no reason to make any of these changes other than to promote a fundamentalist form of Christianity in public school. How does any of this help students? It doesn't. This is the sort of bill you would only propose because you live in a predominantly Republican state where Christianity is just a way of life, not because you actually care about education. With no other religion would any of this ever be considered. It's also the logical conclusion of having this kind of Bible as an elective type of class at all. Whenever they're proposed, church-state separation advocates are quick to warn about how the classes, even if they're technically legal, are part of a larger right-wing scheme to bring religion into the public school system. Lawmakers often try to calm the criticism with caveats about how, well, the classes must be taught objectively. Even though there are plenty of stories about how teachers have crossed the line. But you can see from the initial versions of this particular law to what's been happening ever since, that when they were given an inch, they have tried to take a mile. 
The same thing happens with putting In God We Trust on school walls. The second you allow that, it doesn't take long before conservative lawmakers want the Ten Commandments up too. And they always cite some historical reason for it, as if it's not really about pushing their faith on others. And make no mistake, this bill is part of a Christian nationalist agenda that tries to use the myth that our nation was founded on a particular brand of fundamentalist Christianity, which it was not, in order to justify laws that govern all of us. That is exactly what George Burns is doing. In a statement announcing and defending this bill, here's what he said. And keep an eye out for those historical buzzwords. Spoiler, they're not subtle. Our founding fathers relied heavily upon the scriptures in the formation of our country, and the Bible they used was the King James Bible, which makes it an important historical document. It influenced the writing of the major documents that created this country, including the Constitution. It's historically accurate to use that version, and it is in the public domain, which is also important. All of that about the Constitution and historical accuracy, it's utter nonsense. That would take a much longer video to debunk in full. But in general, he's saying we've got to use the KJV because that's what the Founding Fathers used. Which is completely irrelevant for the stated purpose of the class, since again, teaching kids about the Bible as a work of literature doesn't depend on a particular translation. The public domain thing doesn't matter either, since, guess what, kids can access any Bible they want online for free already, and the law gives them permission to do just that. George Burns has no actual defense of this law. He's just relying on right-wing lies to justify his attempt to get preachers in the classroom and his personal brand of fundamentalist Christianity adopted as the proper form of Christianity, as the default, if you will. Burns is doing exactly what all the critics said the Christian right would do. Here's some real irony for you. The Facebook page for his campaign website from last year includes a post about how he's the husband of a teacher and a strong supporter of public education, and that's why you should vote for him. If he actually supported public education, then putting non-educators in the classroom to teach a specific form of religious fundamentalism would not be on his to-do list. But he's a Republican. Promoting Jesus is what they do, even as elected officials, no matter what they say to the contrary, and no matter how much they claim to respect the law. To paraphrase a famous saying, these people are supposed to put their hand on a Bible and swear to uphold the Constitution, Guys like this do it the other way around. Now, maybe you've noticed that, so far, I have not mentioned what religion George Burns is. That's because I don't need to say things you already know the answer to. Your guess is correct. Burns is a member of Lukfata Baptist Church, which says very clearly on its website that the King James Version of the Bible shall be the official and only translation used by this church. Burns isn't proposing his bill because it would be good for the students. He's doing it because it would be good for his church and his faith. He'll never admit that, but that is what's happening here. Little side note, Burns was first elected to the state legislature in 2020. He was in a comfortably red district and the election was not close at all, but he was only on the ballot because he won the Republican primary. And in that primary, he only beat his opponent by 22 votes out of over 4,100 cast in that race. I'm not saying that the other Republican would have been much different, but elections matter. Look, I don't know if this bill will get anywhere. Even in Oklahoma, a bill that so obviously promotes religion, and one specific form of it at that, is a hard sell because it is so easy for other Christians to criticize it. But I also can't say it's dead on arrival. 
Burns is proposing this bill in a state where just about every elected official is a conservative Christian. They love this stuff, if they can get away with it. If you live in the state, please, please urge your elected representatives to vote against SB 1161. It's the least you can do.